Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Bank of England's inflation expectations report that just came out, which surveyed around 2,500 small to medium enterprises to get a, an idea of how they're dealing with inflation and what they expect in the future. We're also going to go um, further into the factors that are driving inflation and why, personally, I believe we're going to see quite a steady decline in the next three to six months. Um, and I think you guys will enjoy this one because there's a lot of data there and I think it's quite obvious that an incoming decline in inflation is uh, is imminent. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and we're going to see something called the Monthly Decision Maker Panel Data, September 2022. And what this is, is it basically says it here, the Decision Maker Panel is a survey of chief financial officers from small to medium and large UK businesses. We use it to monitor developments in the economy and to track business views. Now, when this data, they do quite a few different things. Um, I'm going to highlight the most important stuff and then work from there. So, the annual private sector output price inflation in, in the DMP remains stable in three months to September at 7.7%. Okay, fair enough. The single month figure for September was 7.4%. Just keep that in mind, we'll move on. Over the 12 months to September, average cost growth was unchanged from August surveys at 9.8%. Over the next 12 months, firms expected unit cost growth to be 9.1%, slightly lower, on average up from 8.3% in the previous month. So that's gone up, but it's lower than what it currently is. So already we're beginning to see um, expectations, All they're still increasing essentially, they're, they're increasing, but remember this, this survey was conducted, as it says up here, between the 2nd and the 16th of September before the mini budget and then the chaos that ensued after it, which was around the 23rd of September. So this doesn't take that take that into consideration. And personally, I would say that if you're a businessman or woman and you're a chief financial officer, you would see what had happened after that, that budget and the fallout after it that you, you would expect um, more uncertainty, therefore weaker demand and potentially lower prices that's how i would see it but we're currently not seeing that in the data and that's why moving on we can see the perceptions of current cpi inflation and this got the news today averaged 10.2 percent in september in the september survey up from 9.6 percent in august so people think uh, inflation is way higher than it is well actually inflation well just headline inflation is 9.9 percent .9 in the uk um, and that and they, they think it's 10.2 percent Looking ahead, DMP members expected CPI inflation to be 9.5% one year ahead, up from 8.4% in the August survey and 4.8% in three years. Now that is a shocker. To say to think that businesses or CFOs think that um, CPI inflation is going to be that high in three years' time, as well as just a year from now, isn't the news that the um, Bank of England is going to want to hear. They, they want to... They want to people to say at least business leaders to say that they think inflation will be under control in two or three years and for them to be 2.8 percent above the inflation target well then that's pretty bad um to say the least going on with the the final statistic that i find quite quite useful in this report um recruitment difficulties remained widespread although there was a decrease in the proportion of firms reporting recruitment difficulties in september 84% of firms reported that they were finding it harder to recruit new employees compared with normal, down from 86% in August. Of those, 59% reported that it was much harder, 4 percentage points lower than in August. So still, we've got a problem with a tight labor market. Once again, I think that will begin to fall. We're already seeing um, large companies um, globally, really, at least in the, in the Western world, begin to cut jobs and fire people, Peloton's firing people, well, maybe for different reasons, Facebook, Apple, you name them, they're all they're all kinds of stuff. Um, I think Amazon was the only company recently to actually hire people. They're hiring about 150,000 part-time workers for the holidays, but that's completely, that's, that's seasonal, so it doesn't really count. Anyway, now we've gone through those numbers, the reason why I think this is the very top of inflation is because well, really, everything is beginning to fall um, from energy prices to shipment prices or container prices to uh, just just um, commodities. Uh, and I'm going to show you now a few different data points that I think you'll find interesting. So, by the way, everything will be in the link, link below if you want to take a look. Some of this stuff is rolling, meaning that, you know, tomorrow it will be different and you'll probably want to track that if you're not watching this the day it was uploaded. 
So take a look in the description too. So first of all, we've got day ahead electricity prices for 2022, um, 10.06, so to today, the 6th of October. Now this doesn't include the UK, but I feel like it's a, it's a lead, it's an indicator of prices generally in Europe. And I think you can probably assume that, you know, um, UK prices won't be far off the French prices for electricity. What we can see here is Nordic countries up here are pretty much paying next to nothing for electricity prices. Whereas France and Belgium and Germany are paying, you know, what what is it? It's um, 256 euros per megawatt hour. And that seems relatively high. And, and to be honest, it probably is. But if you just look at the charts up here and we go back to, and we go back to, let's say, August 17th, things have changed, you know. Front, the front, the French electricity price has gone down by half. Germany has gone down by uh, twenty, well, eighty percent. It, it's, it's it's insane. Like we've got a massive change there, and I think these changes in prices will begin to be reflected in people's expectations of inflation. Because remember, inflation is an expectations game. If you and I assume that we're going to have inflation um, for the next five years, we'll adjust accordingly. We will ask for higher salaries. Um, our employers will ask for higher prices um, when they, you know, whatever product they're selling, and so on and so forth. But when they begin to see costs coming down, they'll try and act competitively and then pass on some of those those savings onto consumers. Otherwise, they'll be forced into it by their competition. People always forget about that part, but it is an important part when dealing with inflation and then costs coming down. So that's one part. That's one part. It's electricity prices. I know it's not necessarily the UK, but we can infer from this data point and I'll, I'll link in the description. Moving on, we've got this really interesting piece of data from FreightWaves. I'll, uh, I'll link this tweet, but this is what got me onto this, this, uh, this statistic. The Craig Fuller on Twitter, he says, the ocean container rate collapse continues to accelerate and has fallen another 10% in the past two days. China to the North American West Coast now down to $2,265 from Tuesday's report of $2,500 and down 86% since the start of the year. How low will rates go? And we can, if we just load this now, we can see that the, the China North American West shipping rates has literally plummeted. I mean, we're not down to 2019, the early 2020 lows. But it's a significant decrease from the beginning of the year. And this will once again be reflected in prices as it takes way less. It's going to cost way less for people, for companies to ship things in from China, which produces everything. They will pass on them savings to consumers. Now, of course, we've got to deal with the fact that a lot of businesses across the globe have a glutton of, of inventory. They've got they've got a massive storage of, of inventory that's that's just there from when you know, demand was high, supply was low, they've they've had to back order everything, it's all finally came and now no one wants stuff. Just in time, inventory management did not work for COVID. And as a result, they've tried to adjust for that. But unfortunately for them, they've adjusted into a recession. Um, so therefore, they've got too much inventory. And we'll also see price reductions just because of that. Um, they've got too much inventory, and they're gonna have to cut prices in order to shift it. So this is this is further good news. And, and why are rates so low? Well, it's a mixture of things, really. China is no longer, um, or they're coming out of a COVID crisis, essentially, where they're locking everyone down. We've all seen the videos. Um, secondly, a lot of containers are in the market now, and that's bringing down prices. FreightWaves has actually got a really cool article on this. Um, it says shipping giants are still rolling in cash, meaning they're making a lot of money, because remember, container prices or the shipping prices are in are in option contracts. So that was the spot price. Spot prices will be reflected in the future. At the moment, they're still making money on the contracts they would have agreed you know, six to 12 months ago. But as they go on to say, 2023 to 2024 will be shaky time for ship uh, leases in particular. And then we go down a little bit, I won't go through the whole article. It says actual and projected container ship deliveries from 2000 to 2026. And as we can see, we can see that it's going to absolutely skyrocket in 2023 and 2024. There could be more containers than ever before. And as a result, we know supply increases, prices decrease, unless demand you know, increases with it. And as a result, we'll begin to see a massive dec decline in the cost of shipping globally. Now, my final point is to do with commodity prices, at least food items, because 
a month or two ago, everybody was panicking that we were about to have a shortage of food stuff. You know, the Ukrainian war with Russia meant that people panicked about wheat, for instance. And that led on to a flurry of news articles saying that we're going to go through a period of rationing and shortages. And to be honest, it's just simply not true. It's fear mongering because Brazil, for instance, is forecasting record grain and oil seed harvest for its 2022-2023 season, boosted by increased acreage. Production of the 2023 crop is expected to reach 312 million. A record Brazil National Agricultural Agency, CONAB, said its first survey in the 2022-2023 crop. This is a 15.3% higher than its estimate of 270.9 million for the 2021-22 season, the current record. So there you go, record output for food stuff or food stock. This will be passed on once again as cheaper food. So the reason why I'm making this, and some will say, "Oh, Brad, you're you're clutching straws here. You know, you're really, you're really trying your hardest to 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 put things together." The thing is, with inflation, it's a it's a massive picture to do with expectations. Now we know demand is being destroyed by interest rates, but on top of that, there's supply side measures. You know, the supply in implications of lower prices in terms of um, gas and electricity, um, shipping, for instance, and food stock that will be will will affect people's um, inflation expectations because they will see it themselves. You know, businesses will see it in their costs. Consumers will see it in their shopping and that will just bring it down as well. So you have to take this all together and I'll continue to report on anything like this, whether it's good or bad, because I think on YouTube, there's a lot of scaremongering. I'm sure it gets all the clicks, but I think um, we got bad Bank of England expectation news from their uh, decision makers panel. But then again, we've got some really good news, which is coming out um, recently to do with prices. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.